Hello friends, this video on human reproduction part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we know that okay, how sperms are produced, why sperm production starts only at puberty. So that is clear now. Now the question is, now the sperms are produced, that is fine. Now how the sperms are released outside the body. So now let us see how are the sperms released. So we saw how they are produced. Now the question is they have to come out of the testis. So how they are released. Now as I said the sperms are produced in the testis. Where in testis? In the seminiferous tubules. Now once these sperms are already formed after that, we saw that where is it formed? It is formed in the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. So at the center of the tube-like structures. Now from this testes, they move into the epididymis, right? How do they move directly to epididymis? No, the, from testes, they, I mean, from the seminiferous tubules, they will first move into the Rete testes and from rete testes it will move into vasa efferentia and from vasa efferentia it will move into epididymis. But all these three are part of testes. So they are formed in seminiferous tubules. From seminiferous tubules they will move into rete testes. From rete testes they will move to vasa efferentia and from vasa efferentia they will move into epididymis. Then from epididymis, it will get into the vas deferens, which is a longer tube. From vas deferens, then the seminal vesicles will also, seminal vesicle is the reproductive gland. So this will also pour in its secretion into the vas deferens. Then it will join the ejaculatory duct. So secretion from epididymis, vas deferens, seminal vesicle, prostate gland, all of them are essential for the maturation as well as for the motility, mobility of the sperms. So now all of these secretion will combine together and it will form a fluid which is known as the semen. Semen is sperms plus the seminal plasma. So the, as I said again the secretion from prostate will also join in. And finally, it will enter the urethra. So from urethra, it will be thrown out. So basically, what is the fluid that is being formed here? So even if you see, this is testis. Inside the testis, you will have the seminiferous tubules, maybe somewhat like this. So from this seminiferous tubules, it will enter into the rete testis, vasa efferentia. Finally, it will get into the epididymis. From epididymis, it will move into the vas deferens. So from vas deferens, it will keep on moving like this when the uh, secretion from seminal vesicle will also join in. It will keep moving where the secretion from the prostate gland will also join in. And finally, it will reach the ejaculatory duct and then the urethra. So now the fluid which is formed is not only the sperms, it has got sperms, it has the secretion of seminal vesicle, it has the secretion of the prostate gland, it has the secretion of the Cowper's gland, so all the secretions together and this fluid is known as semen. So the fluid which actually comes out of the penis so that not the penis exactly, the urethra of penis is actually semen and this semen is composed of sperms, it has sperms plus seminal plasma and this seminal plasma is found to be very rich in calcium, fructose, enzymes, it is very rich in all of these and this calcium, uh, seminal plasma is formed by secretion from the reproductive glands. So this is how sperms are released from the body. So now we understand the process of spermatogenesis. So here you saw this is how the sperms were produced. So here you can see the sperms in the diagram. Now the sperms actually move through the entire vas deferens. Finally the seminal vesicles will pour in its content. The other glands will also pour in its content and finally it will be thrown out through the urethra of the penis. So this is how sperms are released. Now we have spoken so much about sperm. So let us quickly look at the structure of a sperm because the structure is important. Without understanding the structure, you will not be able to understand the process of fertilization. So sperms are extremely tiny bodies and they are extremely small. So maybe with high resolution microscope, they can be seen. 
However, they have, I mean, depending upon the other parts of their body, they have got a big tail and that tail helps the sperm to be mobile. So like how we have discussed in our previous lessons also that in some animals, none of the gametes are motile, whereas in some animals, one of the gametes is motile. So in case of human beings also, the female gamete is non-motile. So female gametes do not move much, but the male gamete is highly motile and this mobility is due to the presence of the tail which acts as a locomotory organ. Now, the sperm is mainly composed of genetic material. It has got all the genetic material stuffed into it. Now, how does the genetic material help? Now, just imagine how a baby is born. A baby is born when the sperm of the father meets the egg of the mother. Right? So where do they meet? They meet inside the body of the mother. So when the father and the mother undergoes a sexual intercourse, then the sperm from the father's body enters into the mother's body through the penis. Right? Okay, so now once the sperm has entered, what will happen? Fusion will happen between the sperm and the egg inside the mother's body. Now as a result, a zygote will be formed and that zygote will gradually develop into a small baby over a period of 9 months. Now the question is, the baby who is later born is seen to have traits, some of the traits similar to father, some of the traits similar to mother. Now the question is, whatever traits the baby has inherited from uh, his or her father has come through the sperm. So the sperm has to have that genetic content because it is through this genetic material which is present in the sperm that the traits get inherited from a father to a kid. Right? So it is very obvious that sperm has to have a lot of genetic material. Now looking at the different parts of the sperm as far as the structure is concerned, it has a head, a neck, a middle piece and a tail. These are the four important parts of a sperm. So this portion is the head, the topmost portion. This point is referred to as the neck. Then is the middle piece. So this portion is the middle piece. And the remaining portion is the tail. So if you see, you see the length of the tail itself is longer than the sum of the other three. Right? So these are the four important parts of a sperm. So let us try to understand each of these in little more detail. Okay. First, we'll talk about head. Now the head of the sperm contains a nucleus. So you see, this much portion is head. And in this much portion, this is the nucleus. So nucleus has occupied almost uh, the entire of the head. So this portion is nucleus and on top of the nucleus or on top of the head, you can see a cap-like structure and this cap-like structure is called acrosome. So acrosome has its own significance. What is the importance of acrosome? This acrosome is filled with certain enzymes, which enzymes are very good at hydrolyzing stuffs. What kind of stuffs do they hydrolyze? They are capable of hydrolyzing the plasma membrane or of the ovum or the egg cell. Now, when the fusion happens between the sperm and the ovum, the sperm actually needs to enter inside the ovum or it actually needs to enter inside the egg. Now, if it wants to enter inside the egg, it has to fuse or it has to uh, break through the plasma membrane. So, the enzymes which are present here in the acrosome, it helps it to go through the, or penetrate through the plasma membrane of the egg cell. So that is the importance of acrosome. And the nucleus, obviously it is, the nucleus contain the chromosome, the chromosome has the genes and that is how the traits get inherited. And this is a haploid nucleus. That is again very common because we all know that sperm and egg, they are both haploid and that is why when they fuse, they form a diploid zygote. So that's, a, the, so that's about the um, head. The next part is the neck where we don't have much to discuss. So this portion is the neck. The next one is the middle piece. So this middle piece has a lot of mitochondria. And what is mitochondria? We all of us know mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. Why powerhouse? Because they are the ones which produce energy inside a cell. Now why this middle piece has got so much of mitochondria? Because the sperm needs a lot of energy because the sperm keeps on moving from one place to another and for movement it needs energy. Just for an example, let us suppose you spend a day that you spend the entire day just sleeping and you spend another day running from one place to another. In which, in which of these cases will you need more energy? 
obviously when you are running from one place to another because for any sort of movement you need some kind of energy and that is why sometimes if you do not eat properly or something or you're very hungry you don't feel energetic you don't feel like doing anything you don't feel like moving at all so mobility needs energy and this energy is provided by this multiple mitochondria which are present in the middle piece and finally the tail which helps in sperm motility so it is like a long flagella which helps in the movement of the sperm now a sperm not only needs to move inside the body of a male for example it is produced in the inside the testes and then it has to travel all the way through the vas deferens ejaculatory duct and finally the urethra to come out of the male's body so that is how it is mobile inside a male body in even inside the female's body also the sperm has to move because when the uh, process of sexual intercourse takes place the sperms are released in the uh, vaginal vaginal area of the female's body but from there it has to again reach the place where the eggs are there at least it has to reach till the fallopian tube so there also even inside the female's body the sperm has to move so sperm's mobility is very very important and that is why the tail of a sperm is also very important thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.